So going forward, you sign with the Knicks in the summer of 2010. This is the big splash summer of 2010 with the South Beach Big Three being formed. Um, me being a Knicks fan, that was, you know, you came at the tail end of a really rough stretch for the Knicks in the mid 2000s. That first stint with the Knicks was incredible. You brought life back into the garden, MVP chance, MVP candidates. How was that experience? Your first time out of Phoenix, um, you must have built really like, you know, a solid foundation in Phoenix. Uh, ownership wasn't willing to give you what you deserve. So you choose to go to the Knicks. How was that free agency experience? Were there any other teams other than Phoenix in New York that you were considering? And then just that opening run with the Knicks where you're really tearing through the league. Yeah, man. I mean, obviously my goal was to uh, sign with Phoenix and continue my career with Phoenix. We had a chance mm -hmm. to win. We lost to a Kobe Bryant air ball with a run our test, you know, layup at the buzzer moment. Right. We were so close to to being a championship team despite the previous years. Um, so my goal that all season was to re-sign with Phoenix, max contract, right. and then go and then go from there. Mm -hmm. um, the numbers I put up in the playoffs, that right there is alone in today's game deserves a super max. <laughs> mm -hmm. You see guys, you see guys averaging 18 points in the playoffs and getting 300 million. Um, mm -hmm. so but the idea was to re-sign with Phoenix and continue to play uh and retire you know, and continue to play with Nash and, and keep keep that going. Unfortunately, uh, with the ownership at the time, um, it didn't work out that way. So I wanted to sign with the Knicks, which was which was great for me as well because I wanted to play in New York. Um, I spent time there as my childhood years and, you know, going back to New York was awesome for me. And then I took on a challenge of wanting to show the world, like, my total skill set, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so when I signed with Phoenix, when I signed with New York, I was able to just to do that, to really show my entire package from ball handling mm -hmm. to perimeter game to inside game. Um, leadership qualities on bringing a team that didn't make the playoffs to the playoffs and, you know, raising the level of play for all my teammates. That was that was important for me. And to show the world that you can play in New York and you can take on this media juggernaut of a place and still be able to have success if you focus on the game of basketball. Um, so all that was in, in in my in my thought process, and to have to have that success, to be the first player to be an All Star starter since Patrick Ewing and these things, mm -hmm. get team to the playoffs after a ten year uh, deficit, you know, and the MVP chance and, and all these things were were truly remarkable. It must have been amazing. Uh, obviously, the Knicks and, and their fans are, are notorious for just being hard on the team. I, I think they're just really passionate fans. Uh, I think you have so much love from Knicks fans, but were there any stints in your New York career where, you know, you just didn't understand maybe just stuff people were saying about you? I talked to Gilbert Arenas and he was adamant. He's like, Knicks fans do it to themselves. The reason that Knicks have not been great for the last how many ever years is because nobody wants to play in a home arena where the fans might boo them. Uh, obviously, it might be a love-hate relationship in total. How how do you feel your relationship with with the New York media and the New York fans was because it's not an easy gig. But that means that means you're not you're not taking the game serious if you're afraid to play in New York because of mm -hmm. booze, right? If you get booed, that means you're not doing your job. You're not you're not playing at a high level. You're not putting the game first. You know, a lot of times in New York, players get caught up in the fashion, the glamour and glitz, the lights, the entertainment, not focused on the game of basketball. And so, you know, us as New Yorkers and as 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 fans, we look at that. We see, hey, this guy really serious about basketball. Is he improving as a player? Like mm -hmm. you can't go, you can't go right three three years in a row. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, the, the fans of New York are are basketball fans, and they and they see if you're focusing on a game, if you're giving your heart to the game of basketball. So for me, the fans saw my heart, they saw my dedication, they saw my willingness to 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 play through injury and all these things. Um, and so I've never really got a lot of bad um, uh, press from, from, from the New York Knicks fans because they mm -hmm. saw my dedication to New York and to the game. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that first season was amazing. Unfortunately in the playoffs, your back catches up to you um, and you're not at full strength in that Boston series and injuries kind of linger uh, throughout your Knicks career. Um, when you when you when you from your perspective, I think you probably got out of the Knicks just in time when things really went south. 
other than health, were there any other reasons other than health why the Knicks of the early 2010s didn't work out? Or, or do you think that health was the main factor and, and the only factor to look at? Well, I mean, health was obviously very important for myself, right? Not being mm-hmm. able to really give 100% and be there 100% of the time because I had to deal with certain injuries. Uh, it was mm-hmm. very difficult for me um, at that time and just trying to get used to the training staff and them getting used to my body and how I need to train and so forth. Took a while to really gain that rhythm from that standpoint. And also we had, you know, coaching staff. Mike D'Antoni didn't want to coach anymore because guys weren't buying into the system. Um, and so Coach D'Antoni left, and then we brought in Mike Woodson. And Mike Woodson was a player, a coach who was a player coach. You know, he mm-hmm. got the best out of us. We brought in some veteran players uh, from Jason Kidd to Marcus Camby to Kurt Thomas to Rasheed Wallace, guys who mm-hmm. were who knew the game, and we played the game the right way. And that was that was a very, very good year for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we brought in Mike Woodson. Um, uh, you know, got fired and then we brought in another coaching staff and nobody wanted to buy into that system. And it was just, it was just a mess after that point of not wanting to uh, really buy in. And so I wanted to somewhat continue my last few years, uh, on a high note. And mm-hmm. so I was able, I was able to somewhat reconstruct my contract and, and, and to make an exit. I was playing with Sheed. I, I've, I've talked to a few players who said he almost became like a coach when he was there, but I mean, loved by the garden, brought the three to the head to it. How was your experience with Rasheed? Yeah, Rasheed was awesome, man. I, I enjoy playing Rasheed. He's just, he's just a good guy. He knows the game of basketball. Uh, he's a down to earth person and he gives mm-hmm. it to you straight how it is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Rasheed, yeah, was a guy who started that three to the head thing, uh, mm-hmm. from a kid with Lamar song. And so, you know, and then Melo then then took it from there and made it made it something special. But yeah, I mean, Rasheed was great to play with. I enjoyed playing with Tyson Chandler. I enjoyed playing with J.R. Smith. You know, I had a really good time playing with J.R. Smith. He's one of my favorite teammates that I, I've played with. Mm, um, and also Iman Shumpert. You know, I, I really enjoyed playing with those guys, man. Baron Davis. You know, mm-hmm. playing 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 with those players for me was 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 special, and I cherish those moments even till today.